Wedged between the high wall of the Himalaya and the steamy jungles of the Indian Plains, Nepal is a land of snow peaks, spectacular landscape, and exotic cultures. Ever since Nepal first opened its borders to outsiders in the 1950s, this tiny mountain nation has had an irresistible, mystical allure for the rest of the world. Until recently, Nepal was a monarchy under executive control of the king. The overthrow of monarchy and resulting political tensions and power struggles has caused Nepal to remain impoverished. As with any nation that faces political uncertainty, this has adversely affected Nepal's economic growth. Though rich in natural resources, Nepal is a developing country with a low-income economy. And despite efforts to combat these challenges, the country continues to struggle with high levels of hunger and poverty. The rates of unemployment and underemployment approaches nearly half of the working age population. Poor infrastructure and very low literacy remains a stumbling block in the development of the country. The Salesians of Don Bosco are dedicated to helping the people most in need in some of the poorest places on the planet. Nepal is one of more than 130 countries around the globe where missionaries are working to assist vulnerable populations. The Salesians have been living and working in Nepal since 1995, when the Don Bosco Society was established in Kathmandu. Sensing the need for schools to bring quality education to children in villages both near and far, the Salesians not only built schools, but also boarding homes. This helped ensure that students from distant villages are able to get an education that will improve not only their lives, but the lives and futures of their families and their communities. The main objective of the Salesians of Don Bosco is to empower children and young adults by providing pathways to new opportunities. This is accomplished through education that includes basic academics as well as life skills and vocational training. Because they were already working with and living within the communities, the Salesian missionaries were among the very first to respond when disaster struck on April 25, 2015. They awaited no official requests. They sought no outside advice. Instead, just moments after a catastrophic earthquake ravaged the region of Kathmandu, and at great peril to their own lives, Salesian missionaries in Nepal rushed to help survivors. Nepal was struck by not only this devastating earthquake, but by many aftershocks followed by yet another terrifying quake on May 12th. Many buildings and beloved temples and monuments collapsed.
landslides and avalanches destroyed villages, and more than 8,500 people have lost their lives. His father died. Sirmanti. Oh, Sirmanti Komala. His uh, wife. His son. Rosan. Rosan. And his grandson. And the Tapago Chora could be a Bakar Vaisaki. Bakar no Vati. Three days after uh, the, uh, his uh, wedding, the son died. Within less than two hours, they dug up and saved the youngest daughter. But the mother wa died, her mother, this his wife, died in his her own lap within they couldn't save her own time. It's a lot of cattle, all their livestock are still dead and buried in under the rubble, no? They have basically received food as aid. Father Jijo has the first to arrive here. The Salesian missionaries of Nepal's Don Bosco Society responded immediately to help those in need and have continued their work with an unwavering determination. They fanned out into the neighboring villages, doing surveys of the damage. They comforted frightened and grieving people, all while distributing life-saving aid. They were able to immediately provide food and water to people who lost everything. They saved lives and they restored hope. So, so far, you know, we have been able to reach out people, you know, many people, many villages that uh, the government um, officials uh, were not able that we have gone. There are places I think it's very, very difficult to reach and it's still there uh, waiting for the relief. And um, there have been a lot of reports, you know, in the, in the radio also that, you know, people are still waiting for the first relief. Even though some houses are left standing, the damage is too great for people to be able to safely return, leaving them without any form of shelter. Villagers have established temporary camps where they eat and sleep together. We are about 235 in the first day and we are managing the food and shelter for all the 20 to 25 families by ourselves. We are managing uh, fooding, uh, lodging and the drinking water. Although it is uh, being, we are being happy, but we are feeling some shortage of food and this shelter, like tents. We are not getting enough tents for the shelter. There are many people who are not getting tents who have got their house damaged by the earthquake. And where homes once stood, people worked to scavenge through the ruins and try to build temporary shelter on top of the rubble of their former homes. And all we need uh, to immediately uh, support, otherwise they, are, they have all the uh, property and all these uh, food grains, all are in, inside the house and they can reach there and there is no shelter, no food, no water like that, and we try to help. Both the young and old are trying to fight back to a sense of normalcy that was destroyed by the quake. Across Nepal, more than 32,000 classrooms were destroyed when the 7.8 magnitude earthquake struck on April 25th 
affecting almost a third of the population of the country of 28 million. A second 7.3 magnitude quake hit on May 12th and hampered the efforts to rebuild. The children especially have been affected, and in more ways than one. Distressed, displaced, and completely traumatized by the scenes of devastation that are all around them. Their world has been turned upside down. Helping to restore some sense of normalcy and allowing kids just to be kids again is incredibly important during times like these to lessen the long-term traumatic side effects. Education simply can't wait for all the recovery and reconstruction work that has to be done. And as they have done in the aftermath of disasters like this around the globe, the Salesians are working to open temporary schools. This will help provide psychosocial recovery of children who are in immense stress. While also protecting them. Protecting them from violence and the risk, the real risk of being trafficked. Any adverse situation, especially of uh, natural calamities, the children are the worst affected. The children of Nepal are among the most vulnerable in the world right now. And right now, they need the attention of the world to protect them. Just two weeks after the earthquake, the Don Bosco Society in Nepal had already reached out to more than 30,000 people. That's nearly 8,000 families in 19 villages throughout six districts. They had already distributed more than 100 tons of relief materials. And this work continues thanks to the overflowing generosity of donors around the world giving to their local Salesian campaign to help Nepal but more help is needed. The work is shifting from being initial disaster relief to helping provide shelter for monsoon season. Tarpaulins are being purchased and distributed and more supplies are needed. While working to meet the needs that are in front of them, Salesians in Nepal, along with their colleagues around the world, are also focused on long-term solutions. Now we here in our village and our community, uh, Don Bosco and our we local peoples working together. And not only Don Bosco, other uh, international communities also uh, came here to support them. And we are really happy to work with uh, uh, these uh, donor agency, donor companies, uh, 
uh, companies like donor agencies uh, like Don Bosco and other uh, people uh, to, to work together in future also. Nepal needs to rebuild, but it needs help to do it right. Therefore, the international community must be involved to help ensure safe reconstruction. Without this, it will be carried out in an ad hoc manner with unplanned reconstruction and without the adequate skills to ensure safety. This pattern will lock poor communities into a cycle of vulnerability. The Himalayan mountains are, after all, a region prone to earthquakes. So it's important to focus not only on providing immediate relief, but also to deliver a more resilient, stronger built environment that will not produce a repeat tragedy of this scale ever again. They must build back, but they must build back better. Relief, reconstruction, and sustainability. While the current phase of relief efforts will continue, they will soon begin the reconstruction phase to provide more secure and permanent housing for those whose homes were destroyed or damaged. Rebuilding schools will of course be high on the Salesian agenda. The sustainability phase will include helping to rebuild personal lives and communities through vocational training and educational assistance as well as life skills classes, such as self-help groups and programs focused on the empowerment of women. Nepal's saving grace has truly been its people. They faced immense poverty even before the earthquake struck, but the village communities have been truly an inspiration to each other and to the world. Faced with overwhelming and heartbreaking circumstances, they did not fight for food or other supplies as it was being distributed. Instead, they helped their neighbors and they continue to do so. <laughs> I'm <laughs> <laughs> Cotama <laughs> <laughs> Among the work being done, smiles can be seen. Don Vasco, very, very, thank you, many, 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 I will keep Thank you so much. They are sincerely happy to be alive and very grateful to those who have helped them to endure. Money,